Hi, Sylvia Angel here. Welcome to this week's video, Five Pillars for Early Intervention at Home. If you are the parent of a child diagnosed with autism, this video is for you. Today you will learn what changes you need to make at home to provide a good foundation for early intervention. Are you ready? Let's get started. As you already know, professionals can help you with early intervention programs, but remember that what you do at home is really important too. It's as crucial as any therapy or intervention that your child might be receiving with professionals and teachers. We could talk about early intervention, it's a very broad topic, but today I want to talk about the five things that you can do at home to help your child. This will set up a good foundation for early intervention at home. Autistic children benefit from early intervention, which is really, really important. But early intervention, it's also about making adaptations in their environment, whether it's in, at home or in school. And in today's video, I want to talk to you about changes that you can make at home so your child is not overwhelmed, your child feels calm and can function better, which it means less tantrums and more cooperation in everyday routines. First, we need to look at routines. We know that generally autistic children work well with a structure and routine. This is really important. I can also see this with my son, Sebastian, who is autistic. Often on days where I see him feeling anxious or moody, I often see that on those days, I either forgot to plan for the day or something that was planned didn't happen and that upset him. So consider a structure and routine essential for your child. Many autistic children have also a language delay or sensory processing difficulties. Some children may also have a developmental delay. So they may experience the world uh, differently than you do. And things may feel a little bit chaotic for them. They may not be fully aware of what's going on and what's going to happen next. So by bringing structure and routine, you help organizing that chaos. So children can feel more relaxed they know what's happening, they know what to expect, what they are supposed to do, and we reduce the levels of anxiety that they may feel. Also, by having a clear daily routine that your child knows, it means that your child will be more likely to cooperate with you. That is because your child will know, for example, your child might know that after breakfast, um, he always brushes his teeth and then he gets stressed. And that happens every time and in the same order. It might take a while before your child learns that, but remember what I said at the beginning, that routine works really, really well for autistic children. So after some time, your child will start, you will see your child cooperating more with you because your child will know what is supposed to happen and in what order. And you will see that when your child finishes breakfast, automatically he will run to the bathroom to brush his teeth because he will know that happens every day. So set up a routine and stick to it. The way I do it, it's very simple. I simply have a calendar in the kitchen and a whiteboard and I write the routine of the day. Sometimes it feels like it's unnecessary because some days like we do exactly the same as what we did the previous day, but although it may feel unnecessary for us, it's essential for our autistic children. So make a list of what your child is going to do on that particular day and at what time and stick to that as much as possible and be consistent day after day. If possible, create a visual schedule for your child. I'm not going to talk about these visual schedules today, but I promise I will do a video on that soon. So for now, create a schedule for you and stick to that routine as much as possible. Have the same routine at least from Monday to Friday and maybe you can create a different routine for Saturday and Sunday. So your child knows, for example, when I get home after school, I take off my uniform and I put on my comfy clothes and then I have a snack and then I play and then I can watch TV and stick to that routine as much as possible. It's important that both parents or other family members, childminders, follow the same routine, 
uh, because consistency is very important. Also try to have the same approach when doing things in your house. For example, in my house, my husband and I set up the morning routine and we did it on different days. But although we followed the same structure and activities, we both had different approach where my husband is very organized and strict. I'm a little bit more laid back and that didn't work well for the children. So the way we uh, sorted that out, it, we decided that my husband was going to do the morning routine. So he did exactly the same activities every day and he had the same approach with the kids and I took charge of the bedtime routine and that worked well for us. It took time for my son to get used to those routines, but believe me, stick to them because it really pays off in the long run. Now I can say it's time to go to bed and my son will follow that routine without any support. He goes and takes a shower, brushes his teeth, put on his pajamas, um, starts reading a book before going to bed, because that's what we did for a long time. So he knows that routine and now he can do that independently all by himself. Another thing you need to pay attention to is transitions. Now, what are transitions? Transitions are when you go from one activity to another. For example, your child is playing at home and you need to go grocery shopping. So you have to bring your child or you have to get your child from the playroom into the car, from the car into the shop. These are transitions. Transition from one place to another, an activity to another. Transitions can be difficult for many autistic children. That can be because if the child is young and maybe has a language delay, the child may not be able to understand why are you picking him up all of a sudden from the playroom? He's engrossed playing or doing something he likes and now you're taking him and bringing him outside and he might be confused and upset. Transitions can be quite problematic, but there are two things that you can do to help your child during transitions. First of all, plan transition time. If you have to be somewhere by a certain time, make sure that you have an extra five to 10 minutes to get ready so you don't have to rush your child from one activity to another. It's better to allow that extra time for the transition rather than doing it too quickly and then your child gets upset, has a tantrum or a meltdown, and that can be then very difficult for both of you. So allow extra time. And secondly, find a transition activity, something that will bring your child from what she is doing now to the next activity. For example, I used to give my son a lollipop, I know, shameless bribing, uh, to go from the playroom into the car if I needed to go shopping. Maybe that's not the best example, but it just helped me back then. Um, I would just show him a lollipop and he would be delighted to get a sweet. He would get the lollipop. And while he was busy trying to open the lollipop, I would walk him out the door and into the car and, and he was happy. So there were no tears in that transition. Again, maybe this is not the best example. Um, giving your child sweets or, or the iPhone to watch a video, but at the time there were a lot of challenges and I just had to find solution to these problems. But that was then, as children grow, develop language, mature, things change. And now my son, he's 12 and he's happy to come with me to the shops. Uh, I ask him to help me and instead of having to give him sweets or the iPhone, he's happy if I tell him, uh, you help me and then we're gonna buy some pizzas uh, for Saturday night and, and he's happy to, to do that. Remember that behavioral problems often happen during transition. So it's important that we allow extra time for our child to go from one task to another. And remember that you can use transitional activities to transition from one place to another, from one activity to another. So you can use a, a toy they like or a little treat to transition from one place to another. It's also important that we are aware of sensory sensitivities. Autistic children very often have sensory sensitivities. That means that your child might experience the world a little bit differently to the way you do. 
Some children may be hypersensitive to some sensations. For example, they may not like the noise of the hoover or the hair dryer, or they may not like bright lights or the smell of certain foods, etc. Or some other children may actually seek sensations. For example, when my son was little, he used to be very curious about sounds and he used to listen to all the objects or all the toys or he also craved the sensation of jumping he used to jump on the bed for a long time so pay attention to their sensory world what do they like and what upsets them and make some changes at home accordingly in my case, at the time, because I saw my son seeking for certain sensations, like jumping on the bed, uh, we got a trampoline and put a trampoline in the garden. He used to use it a lot. He loved jumping on the trampoline in the garden. He still does. Um, and that meant that then at nighttime, he wouldn't be jumping on the bed because he had done it during the day. So that really, really helped. I also noticed, on the other hand, that he didn't like when there was a lot of noise or a lot of people in one room. So when we did family gatherings or when we went to mother and, and toddler groups, he didn't like being in a room with a lot of people. So unfortunately, I had to stop going to the mother and toddler group. But then with family gatherings, luckily, uh, our families understood so, and they were they were okay if Sebastian didn't want to be with everybody. Maybe we were all in the kitchen eating together and Sebastian didn't want to be there. Too much noise, too many people, and he needed to be in a quieter place like the sitting room. It was great that our family understood and then people could go in and play with Sebastian, but in small groups or one person could go in and play with Sebastian at a time. That worked better for him rather than try everybody trying to talk to him and interact with him at, at the one time. So pay attention to your child and make some changes to your house. Maybe you want to, like me, get a trampoline. You might want to unclutter some rooms if that's too much for your child. You might pay attention of what kind of clothes they like. If there's Maybe they don't like woolly jumpers. So you, you look at their sensory world and try to create at home an environment that is calm and pleasant for your child. Another aspect to take into account when we want to support early intervention at home is to create an environment where we give tools to our child to communicate. Many autistic children also have a language delay and because of that some children can experience a lot of frustration when people don't understand what they are trying to communicate. So find ways for your child to communicate basic things with you. Eventually, you may consider communication systems such as hand signs or pegs or a device. But in the meantime, there are things that you can do. I also want to say that many children do develop speech eventually, but we want to give them a tool to communicate in the meantime. For example, you can have pictures of their favorite food in the kitchen. Uh, so when they want something, they just touch it or grab the picture and you give them the item. I suggest that you use real pictures of objects because that's very easy for children to, to understand and know what they mean. Or you could use empty containers like a, an empty juice carton or an empty packet of biscuits as well uh, for your child to give it to you when they want to get that. The reason you want to start using pictures to communicate is that you want to start working on communication. One of my clients was telling me recently, my child doesn't want to use pictures. When he is hungry, he goes to the kitchen and gets a yogurt and that's it. And he's not motivated to use pictures. But it's really important that from a young age, we work on communication. When the child is at home, in this case, it's the child can let us know that he is hungry because he will just go to the kitchen and get something from the fridge. So that's how we know that he's hungry and we might offer lunch at that stage. But what happens when the child is in the playground? How is the child going to communicate to you that he or she is hungry? That's why it's important that we give them tools to communicate from an early age.
So to encourage your child to use pictures, what you could do is to put some things out of reach. So when the child is hungry, they can't reach for what they like. Maybe the yogurts are on the top shelf of the fridge. You have the pictures handy so your child will realize, oh, it's easier to get the picture because I can't reach for what I want. So encourage your child to use the pictures to communicate with you. Initially, start by using just a few pictures, maybe three pictures, five pictures, no more. A few things, but you need to pick items that your child really, really likes. If your child is non-speaking, support communication with visuals as early as possible. This is very important. This will not only help communication, but also it will help language development. So it is really important that you do that. Autistic children often have something called special interest. And basically what that means is they are particularly interested and they want to spend a lot of time in certain activities. For all the children with autism, maybe some of my students are interested in the Titanic, in Minecraft, computers, the space, but younger children may be interested in uh, for example, feeling different textures or playing with water or um, listening to a particular song all the time, no matter what it is, uh, pay attention to what your child is interested in. Knowing what your child is interested in is very important because this can be very helpful in so many different ways. For example, some parents are telling me, my child is not playing with me. He wants to play on his own and he's not interacting with me. So when we know what the child is interested in, we're going to start creating opportunities to engage with our child. And their interest may be as simple as playing with water. So that's okay. We'll let the child play with water and maybe gently we can join in that game. What often happens is when we want to interact with children, we often go with our own agenda as teachers, as parents. We may want the child to engage with an activity that we think it's going to be fun. But with autistic children, it's very important that we pay attention to what do they like and we start engaging with them with activities they like. It's also important for me as an educator to know what the child is interested in to support, for example, communication. If I introduce pecs or sign language with a child, I always start teaching them signs or showing them pictures of items they are really, really interested in. When I do that, they are more likely to use the signs or the pictures to communicate with me. So knowing what your child likes, what are their uh, special interests is really, really important. So think of your children, what do they love, what motivates them. Uh, sometimes we think that children with special needs, they need educational toys or they need special toys, but I'm not so sure about that. Uh, let's engage with them in play with activities they really, really like, with things they are interested in. So take a note of what your child loves, what your child is interested in, because this can help you later on motivate your child to interact with you, to communicate with others or to learn in school. I hope this video was helpful. There's so much that we can do to support early intervention at home. But remember, you need to build these five pillars first to create a, an environment where your child feels um, calm and comfortable, an environment that is predictable to them and an environment that will allow them to communicate effectively with others. Anything else that you would like to know in relation to early intervention, let me know. Just write a comment below so I can create more videos answering your questions. You can connect with me and talk to me in social media. I am there all the time during the week. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please click the subscribe button below so you don't miss any videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye bye.